This video we're going to go through some definitions and an example and this is the typical textbook kind of example except we're going to carry it a little further than most textbooks would. Uh, suppose Farmer Brown quits his job working for Farmer Blue where he was making $40,000 per year. He takes $100,000 out of the bank and he was making 5% interest on that money before he withdrew it and he buys 10 acres of land. Suppose he grows strawberries and sells them for $90,000. He also pays $1,000 for seeds, $5,000 for fertilizer, and $10,000 for a worker to help him pick the strawberries. And additionally, Farmer Brown desires a minimum of $5,000 in compensation for his efforts as an entrepreneur owning this business. Now that's over and above any other labor effort that he puts in, just $5,000 for the fact that he's in there taking a risk, working as his own boss. It's, it's annoying. It, it's harder than working for someone else. He also bought a tractor for $10,000, which the IRS says over the last year depreciated by $2,000, but the tractor is still worth $9,000 on the resale market. And the typical problem will now ask you to identify which of these costs are implicit, which are explicit, and then they'll ask you to calculate the accounting profit and the economic profit. So let's do that. An explicit cost is anything where you can imagine that Farmer Brown actually has to take money out of his pocket and hand it to another person. So an explicit cost, just like an explicit film, it's right there in your face and you can see it. You can see the money changing hands. So explicit means you can see the money move from one place to another. So an explicit cost, let's look at these different costs here and identify which involve Farmer Brown taking money and handing it to someone else. Um, this $40,000 that he was making before he quit, is Farmer Brown this year going to be taking the $40,000 out of his pocket and handing it to someone else? Answer, no. That's $40,000 he won't make now. It won't be coming to him. But it's not money that's coming out of his pocket. And you can see the movie move, money moving from his pocket to someone else's pocket. So it's not an explicit cost. The $40,000 that he's not making anymore is, you can think about it as an opportunity cost. And... Um, that's an implicit cost. So $40,000 that he's not making now that he used to is an implicit cost. Now, he takes $100,000 out of the bank. That's not really a cost because uh, he's buying land with it and we're, we can, I guess we'd have to assume he could sell the land and get that money back. Now in the real world there might be some some other costs involved with doing that, but that $100,000 isn't really a cost but what is a cost is the 5% money that he's not going to be getting anymore. Now this sounds just like the 40000 he's not going to be making uh, at the job anymore. And so the 5% this year that he could have made on the $100,000, that's 5000 that's another implicit cost, so $5,000. He grows strawberries and he sells them for 90000 Well, that's not a cost. That's actually his revenue. So we can put that over here as uh, his uh, revenue, total revenue equals $90,000. So maybe these were uh, $9 per pound for strawberries and he sold 10,000 uh, 10, pounds of strawberries. So that's his revenue. That's not a cost at all. He also pays $1,000 for seeds, 5000 for fertilizer, and 10000 for labor. So when he goes and buys these seeds, is that an explicit cost or an implicit cost? Well, I assume that he actually has to pay for them, take money out of his pocket, or a credit card, or a check. doesn't matter if it's cash, as long as it's money that moves from him to someone else. You can see the money moving, and so that's an explicit cost. When he buys the fertilizer, same thing, that's an explicit cost. And the $10,000 he pays his workers, that $10,000 is also an explicit cost because money in some form, cash, check, credit card, has to move from Farmer Brown to someone else. So those are all explicit costs. So let's just lump them together there and call that uh, 
thousand dollars in explicit costs. Um, also, Farmer Brown desires a minimum of five thousand dollars in compensation for his efforts as an entrepreneur. This is the amount of money that Farmer Brown wants to pay himself. Otherwise, it's just not worth it to him to stay in business. Now, is that an implicit cost or an explicit cost? Well, that's an implicit cost because it's not money that's moving from Farmer Brown to someone else. It's, but it's just something in Farmer Brown's mind that he's thinking about that he has to have. Otherwise, uh, he's going to get out of this business in the long run. So that 5000 is what we call normal profit or the return to the entrepreneur, the return to entrepreneurship. It's the amount that he's going to want. Otherwise, he's going to get out of this business. So that 5000 that's an implicit cost. Now, um, another cost here. He bought a tractor for 10000 Just like the land, that's not, that whole thing's not a cost. Just how much it's depreciating. But there's two different ways to view depreciation. Uh, one way to view depreciation is uh, what the IRS says, accounting depreciation. And they say that's uh, $2,000. Now, is that $2,000 an implicit or an explicit cost? Is the money going from him to someone else? Answer, no. He already bought the tractor for 10000 That was an explicit transfer of money, but not really a cost because it's an asset now. But the 2000 depreciation, um, I guess most people would say that's an implicit cost. So let's put that in here, uh, 2000 But there are two ways to measure depreciation. Accountants do it according to a rule book. Uh, gap, generally accepted accounting principles in the United States. Uh, but uh, economists look at depreciation a different way. We want to know not how much does a book say depreciation is. Uh, depreciation is really supposed to reflect how much the value of the asset has gone down. And so an economist would say, well, you bought the tractor for 10000 How much could you sell it for now? 9000 Okay, the real depreciation is a thousand. And so we have two different versions of this implicit cost. And again, they're implicit because as the the value of the tractor goes down, it, the per, the person is not visibly seen handing money over to someone. So that's why it's an implicit cost. But there are two different ways we could we could view that cost according to a rule book 2000, the accountant's version or a thousand for the economist version of depreciation. Now that we've gone through all these numbers, what you would normally be asked to do is calculate what would an accountant say the profit would be and what would an economist say the profit would be. Well, what an accountant is going to do is take the total revenue of 90,000 and then start subtracting off explicit costs. Acc uh, accountants don't count uh, implicit costs for the most part except for depreciation. An accountant measures the money as it flows away from a business as costs for the most part. So they're going to take the 90000 and then they're going to subtract off the 16000 in explicit costs and then subtract off the $2,000 in um, accountant's depreciation and the accountant's version of the profit would be 90,000 minus 18,000 is $72,000. An economist, on the other hand, is going to say, um, wait a minute, you forgot some costs and you got the depreciation wrong. So you could think about us starting with that $72,000 figure and uh, let's start with the 72000 And the first thing we would do is add back $1,000 in that depreciation to correct for that and get 73000 right? Then, after we say we fixed that problem with that um, depreciation, we would say there are some other costs of Farmer Brown getting into this business. One cost is that uh, he's losing... $40,000 that he could have made somewhere else. So we subtract off the 40000 
And then we say he's also losing $5,000 that he could have earned in interest if he was not, if he didn't have his money in this business. And then also, Farmer Brown told us that just to make it worth it to him to be involved in this business, um, the extra stress of being an entrepreneur, the extra worry, um, he wants to make it a minimum um, another $5,000 to return to him being an entrepreneur. So we're going to subtract off these things. So the economist's version of profit would be $23,000. So $23,000 is what we would call his economic profit. Now, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Well, it would be a good thing because we have accounted for all the costs that Farmer Brown had for getting in this business. And what this 23,000 means is he did better than he could doing the other thing he could have done.